Good evening and welcome to another episode of Tubules Live. Today we have Dr. Ian Klein talking about minimally intervention aesthetic dentistry and he's going to give us a lot of cases. Hello Ian, welcome to tonight's show. Hi Drew, uh, thank you for the invitation and uh, so thank you for, to Dentinal Tubules and thank you to NSK. Most welcome, it'll be great to hear from you about your cases. You're talking about minimal intervention aesthetic dentistry. What is the reason for this topic and what has driven you towards this type of dentistry? I mean, I graduated back in uh, 1993 at King's College and I found just even like a couple of years out in practice that I was drawn to aesthetics. And there was a lot of uh, dentists doing porcelain veneers back then and I thought there must be a better way than this. And so tooth whitening, anterior composites and so on. Uh, was something that I got involved with back in sort of 93, 94, 95. Uh, and I've loved it ever since and it makes sense to me to be doing things minimally. I think that's a great approach and over the years you've probably seen the development and improvements of um, dentistry in that field. You did graduate from King's College and you must have done a lot of interesting uh, courses, interesting things. Tell us a bit about your career. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll move to the next slide if that's okay. Um, well, I, as I say, I qualified at King's in 1993. Um, I worked in a big health service practice, first of all, uh, in South East London. Um, absolutely loved that. I then, though, got myself an associate job in central London, in Bloomsbury, and I then became a partner in that practice. That was great, but then I thought, what else can I do within dentistry? And I was very fortunate to be invited by Manny Fassant to start mm -hmm. teaching uh, for the DGDP study group. Uh, got me involved in some tutoring and some lecturing. Uh, got me involved in teaching dental photography. Um, and then really, as I sort of did more and more cases and photographed more and more cases, I thought, you know what? I, I re I'm really enjoying this. I really like to do more and more of this. So I started lecturing Section 63 courses, uh, private study clubs. I started doing some lecturing for some dental companies. Um, and then I also set up a, my own uh, training company, Cosmetic Dental Seminars, um, probably about seven years ago now. Okay. Um, running courses in uh, smile design, porcelain veneers, uh, all sorts of aesthetic dentistry. Brilliant. And uh, I mean, You've worked in Bloomsbury now. Is that where your dental practice is now? That's right. So my practice is in Bloomsbury. It's just by the uh, British Museum. Uh, and if you're ever wandering around in that area, uh, you will see my practice with this old Victorian uh, original lamp just outside of it with dental surgeon uh, written on it. And I spend normally about four days a week in the, uh, in the basement, mm -hmm. uh, in my surgery, um, and then normally one day a week uh, teaching somewhere. Uh, so for example, I teach photography uh, probably about seven, eight times a year uh, to various groups. Um, and then I have a website which is photographyfordentists.com uh, which is a great resource. It's a completely re free resource for dentists. Uh, you can download which cameras you need, uh, the settings for the cameras, there's some videos on there. Um, yeah, I, I certainly recommend it. Oh, great resource. And of course, as your teaching element, I've heard a lot about the cosmetic dental seminars. Um, tell us a bit more about them, please. Great. Yeah, well, as I say, I mean, I, I set up um, uh, cosmetic dental seminars about seven years ago with uh, a chap called Joe Oliver, who was the original 10 years younger uh, dentist. Um, and him and I now, we originally started running one day courses and two day courses uh, in aesthetic dentistry. And we've really uh, expanded that now. So we take 21 dentists a year and we teach them all aspects of minimally invasive uh, aesthetic dentistry, all the way up to smile design cases using porcelain veneers. Wow, brilliant. Well, that's a great introduction from Ian Klein, giving your background to his career and where he is now. Without further delay, we would like to now move on to his lecture on minimally adhesive restorative dentistry. So after this short break, the floor is over to Ian, so he can start telling you about a great lesson in dentistry. Thank you. Great. Um, here's the, uh, really what I'm going to be talking about for the next uh, hour or so. Um, I'm going to talk about minimal intervention as a concept um, within dentistry. I'm going to talk about what dentists might need to do to adapt to the changes. 
Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about education. Um, and then I'm going to spend a lot of time really talking about materials and different techniques in minimally invasive aesthetic dentistry. Um, and then finally, I'm going to round up with some sort of equipment tips, uh, the things that you might consider uh, buying for your practice if you don't have them already. Uh, and then we'll summarize. So minimal intervention as a concept. Put simply, it's do as little as possible for the desired outcome. Now, with aesthetic dentistry, what that can mean is reshaping teeth, whitening teeth, composite bonding, aligning teeth, uh, minimal prep or no prep uh, ceramic veneers, things like adhesive bridge work rather than conventional bridge work. Uh, it can also involve dental implants uh, rather than uh, prepping teeth for conventional bridge work. Um, now, as a concept, this can be purely additive. Uh, so in a case like this, where the patient has uh, multiple uh, diastomas, all we've literally done is a little bit of reshaping of some teeth and some composite bonding. And the patient's very, very thrilled with this kind of result. Or it could be a case like this. This chap, uh, he's got a gap. The upper right four, which is crowned, is a root fill tooth. And that doesn't really make a great uh, bridge abutment. And the six is a relatively virgin tooth. So we don't really want to be prepping that for a full coverage restoration. So things like resin retained bridge work is something that I do routinely in my practice, uh, just with some simple rest seats, mesial and distal. Um, and you get a nice aesthetic result um, with little, virtually zero, biological cost to the patient. And also a much reduced financial cost to the patient. And then we also, we just did a composite, a direct composite veneer on the three there, just to tidy that, that, that up. Also, I, I class minimally invasive restorative dentistry as things like using onlays rather than full coverage crown restorations. Um, I very, very rarely see the reason uh, for doing full coverage restorations in my practice anymore. Um, this example, this is a root fill tooth. I think we need to be doing um, full, sorry, uh, uh, an onlay, some kind of uh, cuspal coverage uh, protection on teeth like this. Uh, and in this case, this is just with an Emax uh, restoration bonded to the tooth. Much less destructive than putting on a full coverage crown restoration. I think when we look at doing dentistry for our patients, and particularly uh, doing ethical treatment planning for our patients, we need to think of the daughter test. Now, I know lots of you will have heard of this in the UK. This is a phrase coined by Martin Kelleher, who's a very well-known restorative consultant at King's College. And he wrote this.